In this chapter, I'll introduce you to blocks. No, not the coloured plastic ones, but rather something that will help you a lot when you're building iOS applications. Blocks are a very powerful C language feature that we can use in our Objective-C programming. There are similar constructs existing in other programming languages, so you may have seen something similar before. They encapsulate a unit of work, or a block of code, hence the name. They are similar to anonymous functions, and work in the same way. And they may be passed into, or returned from, methods and functions, or may be assigned to a variable, and then called, as you would, a function. Let's take a look at a typical block. The caret symbol is used as a syntactical marker to identify a block. If we look at the code, we can see we have a block called multiply. It's a block variable. It takes in two integers, and as it's an integer block variable, it will return an integer value. The parameter list is defined after the second caret, and we'll see what happens here is if we assign the multiply block to an integer result variable, passing in a 7 and a 4, the multiply block will multiply 7 by 4 and return the value 28. If we look at another example of block usage, we'll see a rather traditional approach here to a notification handler. We have an object which is adding itself as an observer. So this code may typically appear in our view controller class and adding an observer for the UE keyboard will show notification and triggering a selector to be executed when that notification is received. Now here we have a separate selector with the notification handling code within it. If we change that to replace it with block code, we'll see the code is much simpler, much shorter. We are still adding an observer for the UE keyboard will show notification. We are then using the using block method to define our notification handling code as a block. So in this case, effectively as an anonymous function to handle the return of that notification. Blocks share data in the local lexical scope. That means a block defined within a method will have read-only access to all of the local variables and parameters of that method, in addition to functions and global variables. Other forms of callback will not have that. If you think back to the previous example, there's no way the code within that handler function could have access to any of the variables within the code that defined it as a handler for that particular notification. We can declare variables with the double underscore block modifier within our functions, and then the block will be able to change the values as well as having read-only access. So a block is a portable, anonymous object, similar to an anonymous function, that encapsulates a single unit of work, and it's designed for execution at some future point in time. That makes them perfect for implementing asynchronous functions or handlers, and they are used often as parameters of framework methods. They're also integral to Grand Central Dispatch and to NS Operation concurrent processing. We will have a look at the NS Operation usage when we start to talk about networking performance issues and other performance tuning in the next chapter. So it does make sense to learn how to use blocks. Blocks are also used in not only notification and completion handlers, as we've already seen, error handlers, enumeration through arrays or through assets, as in asset library, for example, view animation and transitions, and also for sorting. Now, in the next lesson, we'll take a look at an example of using blocks with the asset library framework with the library browser application.